So you are considering to buy solar panels and you're wondering what the specific advantages and disadvantages are between the flexible and the rigid solar panels. Well, in this movie, I will give you the relevant information that will make you aware of these differences so that you can choose which panel is the best for your setup. So I want to structure this movie in such a way that we can continuously compare the flexible versus the rigid panels and do that on a side-by-side -side basis. And I'll discuss three different topics which I believe are important for you to know. The first one is the durability of the material. The second one is the technical performance of the panels. And the third one is the price and lifetime that you can expect. I'll also add a fourth category in which I just quickly share some of my concerns regarding the fire hazards of flexible solar panels. Okay, so let's get started with the first topic on durability. Now, any kind of technology will eventually degrade and break down, and this is also true for solar panels. The reason why solar panels break down can, can really vary. You've got hot spots, delamination, potential induced degradation, micro cracks, internal corrosion, and the list goes on. But I think there's only two of them that can be important for you to be aware of, so I'll mention them right now. Now the first one is UV degradation. You can really see this with flexible panels, whereby the top layer, which is made of a transparent plastic, can be affected. So you can start to see this cloudy milkiness inside, which then can reduce the amount of sunlight that actually reaches the solar cells, and the output of your module can be reduced. Now this is a bigger issue with the cheaper panels that often use the PET material, the newer panels have this less, the ETFE material. Of course, UV degradation is not really an issue with the rigid panels because their top layer consists of glass. Now, the second one is the formation of micro cracks. This will always happen in solar panels and it's kind of a, a normal phenomenon. It will also cause rigid solar panels after 20 to 30 years of lifetime to have a reduced output. The output is reduced by around 20% normally. So with flexible panels, this also happens, but the thing with flexible panels is that if you mount them in such a way whereby external forces such as wind, rain, or shocks from the road can kind of move the panel all the time, then you add way more micro cracks to the panel, and this then further reduces the lifetime of the panel. Okay, so let's move on from the durability to the performance of the panel. We'll look at four different items, being the irradiant sensitivity, the weight, the energy efficiency, and the temperature dependency of the panel. Now the first one, the radiant sensitivity, refers to the extent with which the solar panel increases its output as the sunlight increases or as the sunlight decreases as the output decreases. Now for this topic, there's not much difference between the flexible and the rigid solar panels. They all kind of respond linear. Now it's a different story for the weight of panels. So flexible panels are substantially lighter than rigid panels. Rigid panels will give you four times the amount of weight if you want to accomplish the same amount of power output. Or you can say that flexible panels will give you four times the amount of output per unit of weight. You can also put it into different values if you want to express the amount of watts per unit of weight. For flexible panels, you will get 60 watt per kg or 27 watt per pound. For rigid panels, it's substantially lower. 15 watt per kg or 7 watts per pound. Now the third item is the energy efficiency of solar panels, which is the ratio between the amount of electricity that it actually produces out of the total amount of sun power that hits the panel. Now on average, flexible solar panels will always perform less than rigid solar panels. So if you want to put a number on it, flexible solar panels will have an efficiency between 13 to 17 percent roughly, and rigid panels 16 to 21, 22%. So while this means that if you'd buy the very best flexible solar panel out there, it could theoretically outperform the lowest quality rigid solar panel, on average, rigid panels will always give you a higher efficiency than flexible solar panels. Now the last item is regarding the temperature dependency of solar panels, which describe the extent to which the output of solar panels is affected as the material heats up. Now, each and every panel will have its own value for this, but if you compare the average value for flexible solar panels to the average value of rigid panels, then they're quite close. But there's one item that is often overlooked, which is regarding the installation of flexible solar panels. So what often happens with flexible solar panels is they're mounted flush against the background. And as this happens, it leaves little or no space anymore for ventilation of the material. So therefore the material will heat up significantly faster than rigid panels that are mounted free from the background. And this can have such an effect that actually in the end, rigid panels can lose five to 10% of the power output due to heating up of the material, whereas flexible panels can lose 10 to 20% due to this effect. 
So let's briefly look at the third topic that is regarding the price and the lifetime that you can expect for the two different technologies. So the currency that I'm using is the US dollar. For the rigid panels, it's typically in the range of 50 cents to $2. The flexible panels come in the range of 2 to $5 per watt peak. You get the price per watt peak by taking the price you pay for the panel and dividing it by the maximum rated output of the panel. And then regarding the lifetime you can expect for panels, rigid panels last typically up to 20, 30 years, flexible panels 5 to 10 years. So the last topic, as mentioned before, is regarding my concerns on the fire hazard for flexible solar panels. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is that I've seen some dangerous situations happen with friends, and I just want to share this experience with you so that you can use it to your advantage. So the issue is that certain panels, due to technical malfunctions, can create hot spots in the panel where the temperature can rise significantly. Now, if you would place these panels on, for example, canvas from a Bimini on a boat, and in the most extreme situations, the canvas could actually start to smolder and potentially cause a fire on your vessel. So I have seen some evidence from this happening. So I just want to share this with you um, so that you can use it to your advantage and uh, stay safe. So now a question for you. If this information was useful, but you feel that there's certain other topics that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. And I'll use this as inspiration to produce new articles and videos for you and for others. And of course, if you like the video, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up. Kind of keeps me motivated. So that was all for now. See you in the next movie.